This video is sponsored by Instant Gaming. More on how you could save money on video games later in the video. Whether you like Borderlands 2 slag mechanics or not, I think we can all agree that when you are the one being slagged, it's not that fun. Well, maybe for you guys, but I'm a masochist, so today I ask, can you beat Borderlands 2 while perma-slagged? As per my usual, this is going to be an ultimate Vault Hunter mode overpower 10 playthrough. For anyone new to the game, that just means enemies have 4 times health, health regen, and are all 10 levels higher than us. Bar will not be allowed for this run, and I must be slagged at all times. Now usually to become perma-slagged, you need to get to the arid nexus boneyard and get slagged while driving a car. Exiting the vehicle before the slag has time to wear off will leave you in a state of permanent slag until you save quit out of the game. The issue with this setup is that you don't get access to this map until the second to last mission of the game. But worry not, because there's a way to be slagged 24-7 without the need of a glitch. And all you need to do is use this. That's right everybody, this video is also going to be Can You Beat Borderlands 2 with only the ch ch Wait, how the heck do you even say this word? Cuckoo-lane. Cuckoo-lane. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be in the cuckoo lane after this one. For real though, I'm 99% sure it's pronounced Cullen, but I'm 100% sure some people who call it the Chu Lane are going to convulse if I say it like that, so I've decided it's called the Chalupa now. That way, everybody's mad. Anyway, the other gear for this run is going to be a basic shield, Vault Hunter Relic to maybe get some funny drops, and the Legendary Nurse class mod. Now, the Legendary Cat would have been the optimal decision with its crazy SMG damage buff, but I thought the nurse fighting against me getting one shot all the time would be funnier, more thematic, and more challenging. Here's a quick peek at the build. I'll answer any questions about it in the comment section, but I pretty much went for every type of indirect damage source that I could. Anyway, let's hop into the run. So, since I am perma-slagged, all damage that I take is going to be tripled. Therefore, my main game plan is to not get hit. However, that game plan came to a full stop when a bully mong forcefully threw me into Liarsburg where all the bandits were waiting to kill me. Just about any attack that hits me deals well over enough damage to just one shot me, but BL2 has a mechanic known as Health Gate, which prevents you from getting insta-killed as long as you have over 50% of your health. This effect gives you 2 seconds to get your health back up to 50%. A good indicator of knowing if you hit that 50 is the animation of your health bar. If it's shaky, take a breaky, and if it's not, you're ready to get shot. Anyway, yeah, for a lot of this run, we're going to be playing like a cover shooter. Oh yeah, you remember that shield I showed you? Fucking worthless. Any amount of damage would just health gate me anyway, so this was pretty much just a security blanket for me. Now that we've covered damage taken, let's go over damage given. Which, uh, there's almost nothing to talk about. Enemies that are slagged would be taking triple damage, but since I'm never swapping elements, I'm not getting the full bonus. Slag damage on a slagged enemy gives you a 50% damage boost in UVHM, which is cool, but not very helpful. To offset the bad gimmick of constantly slagging the user, the Chalupa also is a dual element weapon, dealing both slag and shock damage. But even with that shock damage, this gun is just straight up bad. Lucky for us, Maya has two skills to help with this. First off, we all seen it coming, Cloud Kill. This skill adds corrosive damage to the mix. If any buzz kills want to complain about Cloud Kill making the run too easy, here's my argument. Yeah, so it was Cloud Kill or the Legendary Cat Glass mod, and I chose the harder of the two. Anyway, the other helpful skill I was talking about was Immolate, which adds fire damage to our shots while we are in Fight for Your Life. So when we're trying to get a second wind, we actually have all the elements at our disposal. Why did I feel so handsome saying that? Anyway, Tutorial Town was a bit rough because of a bully rat we had to deal with, but using Thought Lock, we had the bandits and bully mongs deal with each other. This was actually super helpful because the power wasn't even on to buy more ammo yet. I had like 1500 rounds before that bully rat ate them all. I know I kind of forced this bully mong to be my friend, but he was actually pretty cool. <gasps> Yo, you put the stinky on him! I almost feel bad killing you now. After we met Hammerlock and got Claptrap all fixed up, we made our way towards Boom Boom. Some of the local rack decided to help fight the bandits guarding the place, which was weird because I didn't thought lock them, but I did thought lock the lunatic bombers and got them to blow each other up. The same plan also kind of worked for Boom Boom. I almost died 0.2 seconds after the cutscene ended by nearly running in front of Boom's cannon. This thing ignores Healthgate, so I would have been dead for sure here. 
This time around, I decided to go for Boom first and kick him off of his cannon. After that, I tried to get the brothers to fight each other. This was pretty awkward because they would just jump around like crazy when they would start fighting each other. I would try to use Cloud Kill on one of them, but they would just jump out of it. Oh my god, dude, what the f*** is going on? Why does he jump around so much? Oh my god. What the hell is he doing? What is he doing? Stop! Oh god, I'm I'm so dead. I'm so dead here. After Boom died, I eventually distracted Boom with some psychos and put enough rounds into the back of his head to make me lose some frames. Oh yeah, he died too. I should tell you guys that. After that, we convinced most of the bandits we worked here before saving Claptrap and taking on Captain Flint. This fight was pretty tough. My initial plan was to just thought lock Flint to take his aggro off of me and unload into him the best I could. But I quickly ran into an issue, because uh, I guess you can't activate cloud kill on enemies that you have thought locked? And we kind of need cloud kill for this kill, so we had to change up our strats. We would use Thought Lock on the other bad guys and hope he focused on them as we laid into him. I wasn't the only one adapting though. Flint's AoE slam seemed a lot bigger than before, and on top of being stronger, Flint also got a lot smarter. I think he's finally sick of getting cheesed. He's had enough! He's had enough! Oh my fucking god, dude! Fucking I- Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I shouldn't have ran that way. This is staying on till Flint's dead. Huh? Huh? Well, that was obnoxious, but we managed to kill Flint with a f***ing grape shooter, so that's cool. Anyway, we made it to Three Horns and needed a car. I used my Bullymong whispering powers to have them deal with the bandits while I snuck in and stole the adapter. I got in my car and realized that I wasn't slagged while driving, so I made the rule of no cars right then and there. Instead of ramping over the gap, I just had one of my Bullymong homies throw me across and started our run to Sanctuary. We made it there and killed Door Guy in a solid 4 frames per second. I should probably explain why this is happening. Anyway, we had to go save Corporal Reese. He would have been fine, but I accidentally slagged him, so he ended up dying. I grabbed the power core and almost forgot to kill the 20 bandits to avenge Reese, so I went back and thought locked the Nomad to get the 20 kills for me. After that, we made it to Sanctuary, and Private Dressup got stuck in a slag puddle. So while he tries to get out of that mess, I'm going to tell you guys about our partner, Instant Gaming. How fast do you think you could get a game on Instant Gaming? Take a guess right now. Once your account is verified, getting a new game can take less than a minute. And to prove that to you, I will now speedrun buying Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition on Instant Gaming. Time starts as soon as I open Instant Gaming's website, and the time stops when I get the confirmation from Steam. Ready? Go! Instant Gaming's website, here we go. Fallout 3, bam, enter. Game of the Year Edition, buy now. There we go, go to payment. Blur out all that personal stuff. Now this is the longest part of the speedrun right here, guys. The loading screen. Once we find tech to skip this part, the speedruns for this are gonna be crazy, dude. Any second now. And code, there we go. Reveal, copy it, go to Steam. I accidentally clicked on my OBS, that was a major time loss. But anyway, time, sub 30. And bam, in less than 30 seconds, I got Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition for three bucks. That's $7 going towards more monster for me, baby. So stop waiting, make your gaming instant. How about this? Think about a game you've been wanting to play and use my link in the description to just see what kind of deal they're offering on it. And if you like what you see and end up making a purchase, just know that on top of saving yourself money, you're supporting the channel. Anyway, let's see how Jessup's doing. Oh no, Jessup, be careful. Anyway, after getting all the hub world tutorial stuff out of the way, we headed towards Frostburn Canyon. Along the way, we found a tubby spider ant and killed it for its loot, so that was pretty cool. After that, we found a tubby spider ant and we killed found it a tubby for its loot, so that was pretty it cool. Loot, so that was pretty cool. Besides those guys, nothing crazy really happened. The siren went that way! Idiot. The spike jump this time around was way scarier than usual because I was slagged. 
but we still made it, so it was all okay. Never mind. I managed to photobomb the cutscene here, and jeez, bro, do I really look like that? Lil felt left out, so I gave her a great Flintstone vitamin so she could be purple too. To clarify, this is not me being nice to her, this was just mandatory to progress. This was the first time in the run where I was able to play the support role. I would use my Chalupa and Maya's scorn skill to make sure all the enemies were slagged and Lilith would take them out with her phase walk ability. That was until she dropped the one-liner, and then I just started doing all the work myself again. I'm just asking for one run where she doesn't try to be a cowboy. Like, come on, please. Anyway, after some mobbing and watching some world star type stuff, we got out of there. Our next goal was to save Roland, and in order to get into the Bloodshot Dam, we were going to need a car upgrade. So we went to Ellie's and started taking bandit cars out for parts. Not being able to drive there really sucked because the buzzards would just smell us from a mile away and hunt us down. Usually this part of the run is pretty easy because the cars aren't balanced properly for you VHM, so they only take a couple shots to kill. Don't get me wrong, they were still pretty easy to kill, but it just felt wrong having to shoot these things this many times. I thought cloud kill would have insta-killed these things, but unless they're perfectly still, they just drive out of the cloud before it has a chance to destroy it. We got all the parts we needed and walked back to the dam and punched our new car towards the front gate and quickly got in to honk the horn. I know I'm not allowed to be in the car, but I chose the Iridium Metal skin, so just pretend we're slagged for a second, okay? Bad Ma showed up and started giving us a hard time. I wanted to use Converge on one of the basic mobs around here in hopes that it would yank Bad Ma off the cliff for us, but they just weren't cooperating. So I stuck to the usual strat of hiding, distracting, and spamming rounds at my target. I eventually took him out and made it inside the Bloodshot Dam. For being this far into the run, six deaths isn't so bad. I sure hope that that number doesn't quadruple from one mission alone. Anyway, you guys have probably noticed something I haven't talked about yet, so I'll take time to address this purple haze effect that's been showing up on my screen. Does it bother me? No, not really. My brain is really good at drowning that type of stuff out. Like during the Bane Only run, for example. I stopped hearing the screams by the time I hit Overlook, and life just felt normal. Anyway, something you shouldn't have noticed because the gameplay is muted, was the slag whispers. Yeah, that's what I was hearing for the whole run. They would tell me the silliest things, you know, like, become one with the purple, drink the grimace shake, subscribe to little gas, yeah, and a bunch of other nonsense. Anyway, we pushed our way through the blood shots and made our way into the toilet room. The bad guys in here were just absolutely wrecking me. There's not really any good way to push forward in here without getting shot, and Thoughtlock wasn't too useful because everyone was so spread out. I tried desperately to wash the slag off of my body with no luck, and after a few annoying deaths, I decided to step up my game a bit and get back to my roots. Yes! <laughs> That's right, baby. I started getting some momentum and making some progress. It wouldn't be too long before- Aw, oh, f**k. Alright, I got some explaining to do. So my game crashed because I have my physics settings set to high. That's also why you've been seeing slag puddles and low frame rate kills when I'm point blank on enemies. Slag particles is usually what makes the game crash with these settings, and Twitch chat redeemed their channel points to make me turn it on until the game crashed. Immediately after this crash, Lucas spent a bunch of points to re-redeem it, so yeah, don't use the setting unless you want to crash. After refighting our way through the dam, Mad Mike showed up. He almost put the stinky on a psycho, and that would have been pretty cool, but he failed pretty horribly, so I had to show him how it was done. Yes! Yes! Alright, bye. We found Roland and decided to keep our distance from him. We didn't want any of our slag rubbing off on him because he might get hurt if that happened. That plan backfired when the warden came and nabbed him up. As I was sneaking past all the bandits and loaders, I found a legendary siren class mod. Doesn't help me at all, but if you want any of the cool gear I found in this video or to try the challenge out yourself, I'll have the save file in our Discord server. Link in the description. Anyway, we made it to the warden and started our fight. To the new viewers that know how to have fun without needing to impose restrictions and challenges to your run, you might not know that the warden can actually take Roland to the Hyperion friendship gulag if you don't kill it fast enough. And with our damage output, that means we would only get one or two chances to take the warden out. The warden really gave me a run for my money during this fight. I think it spawned like four angelic guards, which are pretty tough even with cloud kill. Thought locking them proved to be helpful for distracting the bad guys and aggro relief, but I still had to make sure to keep one around at low health just in case I needed a revive. At one point, I thought locked an exploder and it just took a chunk of the warden's health, which felt pretty cool. Near the end, I was getting pinched from both sides of my cup 
hover bus, I had to put all of my trust into my ears and the minimap so I could lay into the warden as much as possible. After a good long fight, I managed to take the warden down right as Lilith was telling me that the drop bard showed up. That was definitely a first try or gulag situation. We fought the rest of the loaders off with Roland and made it back to Sanctuary, where he gave us our next mission to go steal the vault key. Nothing crazy happened at Tundra Express, just the usual. Burn the Varkids, meet Mordecai, meet Tina, grab some bombs, use your dummy mommy mind control powers to get some guy to shoot his friend with a rocket launcher. Basic stuff. We made it to the end of the line and managed to die before I even had a chance to see any of the bad guys. Did a fucking fire pit seriously just kill me? Oh, what the? After that, we found Wilhelm. This fight was honestly not bad at all. I was able to thought lock his surveyors, which got him all confused and he would just spam his Beyblade move, which meant he would just kind of sit in my cloud kill and let me lay into him. I also tricked Wilhelm to put the stinky on one of his loader henchmen and that was pretty cool. The rest of the fight went pretty smoothly and we snatched up the power core for Sanctuary. As I carried it into town, some of my slag wore off on it and Jack took the opportunity to take out Sanctuary. Sorry guys. I made my way to the fridge and managed to burn myself to death again. Absolutely ironic and embarrassing. At least dying to the rats is understandable. Those guys suck. Anyway, we made it to the outwash and started our fight with everyone's favorite spaghetti squid. A one-on-one -on -one fight with this thing probably would have been a real nightmare, but lucky for us, loaders get moonshot down to deal with it as well. Unlucky for us, loaders get moonshot down to deal with us as well. After I got all the loaders to focus on the real threat, we all worked together to fight against the shield regen and took the squid down. I made it to Overlook expecting that dealing with all the loaders would be pretty easy due to cloud kill. Yeah, I couldn't be more wrong. The loaders here are just dead set on destroying the beacon, and I just can't cloud kill them because of it. One of the best skills in all of Borderlands 2 is countered by the f***ing cha-cha slide of all things. Anyway, the beacon became invincible, I died a few more times, and managed to kill off the last loader before making it back home. The next stop on our journey was the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, and for once, I felt like I fit in somewhere. The animals here were being experimented on with slag, and I too was also being subjected to the long-term effects of Great Kool-Aid. Wounding the loaders was tougher than I expected. Ironically enough, it was because Cloudkill was doing too much damage and just killing them too fast. Pamon and Toomba showed up after that. The Pamon fight, as always, felt like I was in a boxing match with SCP-372. That reference might be a stretch, but if you get it, you get it. Toomba, on the other hand, decided to get as close to a cliff as possible and cause some neuron activation in my head. He's asking for it, dude! The ultimate loader up ahead was pretty easy because you can trick it into just standing in your cloud kill, but the loot dudes ended up being pretty annoying. I tried to fight them two at a time so I could get them to fight each other, but I kept getting jet loaders that would just glitch out of bounds, so that was lame. Anyway, we made it to Bloodwing and somehow the game didn't crash from PhysX and all the slag particles in this cutscene. Looks like hydro cooling your PC with slag is a working solution for that. Anyway, the Bloodwing fight itself actually sucked. Each phase was just harder than the last. Fire phase was alright, shock phase she became resistant to most of my bullet damage, and then corrosive phase, she was straight up ignoring cloud kill. Mordecai wasn't really helping as well as he usually does, because my existence just kind of means things are going to be purple already. His ammo and health files were very helpful though, because surviving Bloodwing's elemental dot damage just wasn't possible. Come to think of it, surviving any dot damage wasn't possible. I was also burning through a lot of ammo trying to stay alive and dealing with these skags. Bloodwing would also power them up with elements, and that made second wind super sketchy. The third attempt at this fight was an absolute roller coaster. With so many close bleedouts, Bloodwing really made me work for this win. At one point, I had a fast bleedout and survived only because I got a lucky critical hit. And after 15 minutes of straight up dodging and getting second wins, the attempt ended like this. Get back, 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 back. No, you fucker, Bloodwing. Don't fucking do this, Bloodwing. I swear to God, Bloodwing. This one was a tough call, but I think Bloodwing gets the point on this one. I feel like with those last two second wins, I got a little lucky. She also reminded me of my mortality by nearly killing me with her dying breath. That almost f***ing killed me! From one perma-slagged individual to another, GG Bloodwing. 
Anyway, with Claptrap upgraded, we set off the Thousand Cuts to recruit Brick and his air support. Things got off to a rough start as I blew myself up with a barrel because Converge just destroys any barrels in its range. Barrels are also considered environmental damage, so they just bypass Healthgate, so yeah, I was super dead. We eventually made it to the initiation and went back to playing the support role, helping my god Lyoth homie the best I could. Our homie started beating up some kids though and that wasn't part of the deal, so I ended up murking him and finishing the initiation alone. I decided to let Sarcastic Slab live this time around, not before nearly killing him and leaving him slagged so he knew how I felt. Yeah, you're not clapping now, are you? After that, I played support for Brick. I don't know where he came from, but a little Goliath ended up putting the Stinky on all order. I thought that was pretty cool, so I ate his soul Dragonborn style to absorb his powers. Brick disappeared after that, and I found him murdering Sarcastic Slap. This game is so incredibly cursed. What are you doing? Brick! Brick, what are you doing, Brick? Brick! Brick! Anyway, after our usual loader launching shenanigans, we made it back home and set off to our next objective. We needed to steal Jack's voice from one of his body doubles. This guy is programmed to run away from you, so Cloud Kill wasn't too helpful. He is also considered a large enemy, so phase locking him just does damage without taking their mind over, so that didn't work either. Sometimes after a few attempts, he just bugs out, and this time around I noticed something extra cursed. If you watch closely, you could see that the Jack double is using a Hyperion SMG. But if you keep watching for just a second, it turns into this thing. The fuck is that? Anyway, yeah, he stood still and just let me kill him. We now had all the tools necessary for the bunker raid, so we went to Thousand Cuts and started our climb. Obstacle one was this basic toaster. We were really close to first trying a max level one, but on our second attempt, we got a lowest level one, and that went a lot easier. But that's where the easy ended, because up next were the baby turrets. Yeah, so this is obviously bad. For the new players watching, these turrets are glitched and are completely immune to grenade splash damage. And they also have insanely strong health regeneration. But Gas Mask, you're not using grenades. While that is true, a lot of guns in this game deal grenade damage on top of their bullet damage, the Chalupa being one of them. The gun's bullets deal shock damage, and then the slag grenade splash is added to them, so when we shoot these turrets, we are only seeing the blue damage numbers. I should also point out that Cloud Kill is proccing, but I do not see the cloud and I do not see the green damage numbers, so we are going to have to pull through with only our shock damage. First thing we did was save quit out of the game. These turrets can range from level 89 to 91, so we wanted to make sure they were both at the minimum level. Lucky for us, we got this on our third try. Now for the hard part. We had to sit in this spot, use Scorn to slag the turret, and just try our absolute hardest to fight against the health regen. The Chalupa is also pretty inaccurate compared to its non-unique counterpart, and with the slag particles, it was hard to tell if I was even hitting it. I kid you not, the first turret took about 900 bullets to take out which is like over half of my ammo pool. I had an idea for the second one that made it a little bit easier. There was an angelic guard nearby, so I lured it over and thought locked it. It helped shoot the turret with me and also gave me some extra fire rate from Maya's Rex skill. So this one only took about 700 bullets. Yay! Up next was the Super Toaster. This guy is super easy to cheese by just standing behind it, but even then I ended up dying multiple times. By this time in the run, i just seen all enemies completely differently. An RPG loader was just as dangerous as a gun loader because any amount of damage would just bring me to a sliver. A rabbit skag bites you, you're dead. You get hit by a stray bullet, you're dead. High five claptrap too hard, you're dead. The list goes on. Anyway, I got sick of dying so many times, so I locked in and found this cool spot right here that makes it so the constructor just starts bouncing, and that made the fight way easier. After that, all we had left was sniping face McShooty, and honestly, this was probably the worst face McShooty snipe on this channel. Except for that one time I died three times trying. But that one doesn't count, we're just gonna pretend it never happened. Like I said before, the accuracy on this thing is terrible and I ended up trying to do this for almost an hour. I gave up trying to tap fire to conserve accuracy because there was no accuracy to conserve in the first place. But after 30 non-headshots and 7,000 misses, we finally got him in the face. Thank God, dude. Oh my goodness. 
Finally at the bunker, we started taking out the turrets. These guys aren't glitched like their tinier counterparts, so Cloudkill actually put some work in on these. After that, the bunker showed up and we started our fight. The game plan was to phase lock a loader, lane to the bunker, and have Chain Reaction help us out for this fight. Chain Reaction, combined with bunkers overlapping hitboxes, lets our bullet hit multiple times, which gave us some extra DPS for this fight. We almost had this first try, but this loader decided to die like one frame after I bled out, so that sucked. After another 20 minutes, we managed to take the bunker down and bask in its blood. Angel Core was up next, and let me tell you, that place was just paradise. Everything was purple, there was giant slag feeding tubes, I befriended some ion loaders to protect me. Everything was great. Never mind, get me the fuck out of here. Anyway, Angel Core went decent, Roland showed up and I got to play support again while him and his turret distracted the loaders from my wet toilet paper squishy body. Alright Roland, let's get this vault key. Uh oh, Roland, it, it looks like some of my slag wore off on you. Just, just make sure not to get shot until it wears off and you should be- No! Anyway, Jack kidnapped the wrong siren. You would assume the one full of iridium runoff would be the one you want to charge the iridium fueled key, but oh well, at least Lilith is gone now. Now the only voices in my head are my own and the slag whispers. No! Sawtooth Cauldron was our next destination, and my worst fear ended up happening. Some of you guys might remember the death cubby. You spawn here and you're trapped. You try to leave and the ambush commanders are there to ambush you. Who would have thought? My only hope was to make a break for it as all the bad guys were getting thrown around from Converge and make it to a safer spot, which was standing on the cliff of a volcano. So that was cool or warm. I don't know. I'm not allowed to make jokes about other elements right now. I was having trouble killing these guys until a heavy nomad showed up and I tricked him into shooting them with a rocket launcher. After that, we found another slag homie, blew up Boombringer, let Mortar get his revenge, and rode the elevator up to deal with the buzzards. Man, these guys had the audacity to not stand still in my cloud kill clouds and I ended up dying multiple times because of it. Luckily enough, when you're as bad at this game as I am, you learn to send the elevator down so you don't have to wait for it when you inevitably die. I tried to yank some of the bad guys up here off the tower so I had some breathing room, but that didn't go too great. <sighs> so close. A loot dude showed up as well, and he decided that he was unslaggable, so that was fun. We eventually managed to take out enough bandits to give us the chance to take out the buzzards and watch the sunset with one of our homies we met up there. We made it to the boneyard, and we were finally able to do the permaslag glitch after pushing a car over to a slag puddle. Fun fact about this glitch is that you can stack it as many times as you want. One stack will be three times damage, two would be five times damage, three would be seven times damage, etc. I thought that since any amount of damage would just health gate me anyway, what's the harm of just getting like 10 stacks? That way, recompense would deal some crazy damage when the enemies attacked me. Yeah, that didn't work at all. Anyway, we cranked some valves, listened to the whispers, got another stack of permaslag, turned some more valves, listened to the whispers again, got another stack of permaslag, watched our car almost explode from bumping into a skag with all of our stacks of permaslag, got another stack of permaslag, watched my car explode from hitting a skag with all my stacks of permaslag, and made it to the Arid Nexus Badlands. Ten seconds after I got here, I forgot that whole list I just read to you guys and tried to grenade jump over this gate and just died because of it. No grenade jumps means no Saturn skip, so we started trying to take this overgrown loader down. Honestly, Cloudkill did most of the work here. I did not have enough ammo to just lay into him, so I played it patiently until I felt safe not playing patiently anymore. The big toaster after that made it pretty hard to get into the info stockade, but my patented try again and hope they missed this time strat prevailed as it always eventually does. It was now time for the final stride towards the vault. The mobbing at the claptrap door went relatively well. Loader combat was easier than bandit combat for this run, and I also kind of just got to play support for the turrets, so nothing much to note here. After that, I save quit the game so that I could do the hero's pass skip without dying and made it to our fight with Jack. I'll be real with you guys. This fight sucked. This fight always sucks, but some even goofier stuff happened this time around. You know that invincibility shield drone that Jack gets when his shield breaks that lets Jack just teleport and heal all his health back in like two seconds? Yeah, that thing can't get cloud killed. Like it just doesn't activate when you shoot it. I mean, I can kill these things, it's just kinda hard. But even after that, it only takes Jack like 20 seconds to teleport away and spawn another one. Which considering Jack's health regen, that's pretty freaking quick if you ask me. I decided to try some converge shenanigans and use a rack to yank him into a death hole, but that just wasn't working. So we had two options. Keep trying an impossible fight until Jack glitches out and stands still, or just use the good old block him at the terminal strat and skip all the pointless stuff. They both have the same result, but the latter gets the video out sooner. So here's my PowerPoint presentation on how to kill Jack. Oh. 
Yeah, so if there's any part of you that thinks we can win this fight without some cheese strats, you are incredibly wrong. Even doing this strat, I almost lost because Jack is super hard to slag, and if he's not slagged, his health regen matches my DPS pretty much exactly. With less than 200 bullets left to my name, the slag kicked back in and we were able to kill Jack just barely. Now all that's left is the warrior. My first attempt here ended real quick because the warrior just used fire breath 4 seconds after the cutscene ended, but the attempt after that we managed to get to some safer spots and just ran between ammo stations. It took a while, but the rest of this fight played out pretty normally. The warrior usually health gates you in one hit at OP10, so this fight was pretty basic. Heck, most things at OP10 will just one shot you. Wait, did being slagged even affect the challenge at all? Is OP10 really that unbalanced? Have I become so used to its abuse that I didn't even realize I've been subjecting myself to this the whole time? Oh no, I gotta end the video before you guys see how low the death counter- You can't beat Borderlands 2 while permaslag. Bonus content time, woo! So usually during these runs, I like to see if the gear I'm using can obtain itself. Yeah, that was a bad idea for this run. You get the Chalupa from Mick Zafford at the end of the Clan Wars quest line, which was probably 80 times harder than you think. 81 maybe? We start off by blowing up the Hodunk's big tire because we hate them, and then we blew up the Zafford's distillery because they have an alcohol problem and we want them to get better. After that, Mick hired me to go blow up some of the Hodunk's race cars. The race car fighting was actually pretty easy. Dealing with the slag hallucinations was a bit weirder. After that, we went back to the Zaffords and had to kill their bagman. We we're supposed to side with the Zaffords, so I tried befriending the bagman and chilling near the waterfall, but that didn't work, so I launched him off of it. Only problem with that is I can't reach the key if he falls down there. No biggie, I'll just kill him with a gun. Oh darn, where did I put that footage of me killing him with a gun? Okay guys, I triple checked and I don't think I could kill this guy with a gun. He just moves and teleports around so much that he doesn't even stay in the cloud kill long enough for me to even think about doing this. I'm pretty sure he's corrosive resistant too, but I wouldn't know since I can't hit him with cloud kill. So it looks like we can't continue. It'd be pretty cool if I spent like three hours of my life trying to do some extremely convoluted setup where I put the stinky on the bag man and tried to grab the key as he died. Wait, where did all this footage come from? What is this? Oh! Get some food in your system. This is my last one. Drink the water. You've been saying that. <laughs> I know I have. On gas mask, this is my last one for the day. Come on. Just grab the fucking key. Just grab the fucking key. Yes! 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 Fucking A! High five! That's odd. I don't remember any of that. Guess I must have blacked out or something. Anyway, that has to be the hardest part of this quest line, right? Oh, what the f***? So yeah, we tried using Emulate's fire damage and that didn't work, so it looks like we can't continue. It would be pretty cool if I spent like two hours of my life trying to do some extremely convoluted setup where I farm the enemies at this house until I find a bandit with a fire weapon, and then go to the boneyard to perma-slag myself so I'm allowed to drive cars and slowly ram that bandit to the ho-dunk camp and have him shoot at me while I use the fire tanks as cover. Wait, what the fuck is this footage? Did I black out again? Bro, I need to lay off the slag. This stuff messes you up like lean. Wait a minute. Anyway, that made the Hodunks mad, so they told me to crash the Zaffords wake. So I got drunk at Moxie's to get in. Yay, more visual clutter. I got them Ice King wizard eyes, man. Anyway, we went to the wake, paid our respects, and left. This is not a lie for a comedic bit. The objective will check off even if you don't murder everyone inside. After that... It was finally time for the final fight. I started blasting the Hodunks and throwing my slag orb out, and played support one last time for my Zafford homies. Before you go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for making it this far into the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Doing all that helps with the algorithm a lot, and I love reading all your guys' comments. If you want to support the channel more directly, consider becoming a channel member to get videos a day early, saving money over at Instant Gaming using my link, or go to gasmaskgang.com to snag some merch. I will leave my Discord and Twitch channel where I stream these runs live in the description. And last but not least, shout out to Mango Soda, who made this video's thumbnail art. They do commissions and will also be linked below. But until next time, breathe easy, homies.